Hey guys, so today I'm going to read Turtle in Paradise. Um, just follow along while I read. We walked out the front door to go to the Manini, and when Aunt Minnie calls us to, to where, from where she's ironing in the parlor. I'm sorry, she says, whipping a hand on her forehead, but one of you kids is going to have to go over to Nana Philly and give her lunch. I got too much laundry to do today. Not me, Bean says quickly. Me either, says Kermit. No way, no how, Ma. But Buddy says, Aunt Minnie looks up at the ceiling as if, as if she was praying for patience. She's going to be praying for a long time at this rate. I'll do it, I say. Nana Philly can't be any worse than Shirley Shet Temple. Aunt Minnie gives me a long look. Thank you, Turtle, she says. She sounds surprised. You're a good girl. Of course I am, I say. You're just used to a rotten voice. Why, Turtle, Miss B says with a confused smile when she opens the door. How lovely to see you, but I was expecting your aunt. Aunt Minnie got laundry. I'll give Nana her lunch, I say. Aren't you a dear, she says. Well, what I, well whatever you make her, just be sure it's soft. She lowered her voice a notch. Her teeth are very good. All right, I say. It won't be long, she says, walking down the step. You're so sweet to do this. But I'm not sweet. I'm curious. It's not every day you find out you you have a grandmother you don't even know was alive. And despite what everyone says about Nana Philly being terrible, I've been wanting to see if she'd be different with me. After all, I am a girl. Maybe she just hates boys. Wouldn't blame her if she does. I walked into the kitchen with fresh eyes. This is this is where Mama grew up. A thousand questions flashed through my mind. Which bedroom did she sleep in? Did she run up and down the hall? Did she sit on the piano? I hope I hope not. The stove doesn't seem too sturdy. Nana Philly is sitting in the rocking chair in her bedroom reading a new magazine, dressed the same way as when I first met her. I first saw her. I don't know if you remember me, but I'm Turtle. I'm your granddaughter. She looks up. Sadie Bell's girl and blinks. Mama's in New Jersey, I explained. She got a new job as a as a housekeeper for to a rich lady. Anna Philly stares at me. I was supposed to make you lunch. You hungry? I ask. The old lady doesn't say anything. She just looks back down at her magazine. It was it's not it's not exactly the tearful reunion I was imagining. Although maybe that blink was her way of saying she was happy to see me. Then again, maybe she had dust in her eyes. Her, her eye. I go into the kitchen and look around. Mama always makes fancy lunches for the lady she works for. You couldn't even even know people were standing in the bread line if you walked and walked in and saw what they were eating. Ice candle, shrimp, aspic, aspic, caviar sandwich with cream cheese, heart of a lettuce with French des- dressing, mergany mer- cookies. There was no caviar or cream cheese in sight. But there is bread on the table and milk in the ice box. So I decided to make milk toast. I toasted up some bread, stick it in a bowl, and poured milk over it. It's tasty and it's mushy. Nana's eyes eyes the bowl, eyes the bowl suspiciously when I placed it on the table, on the table, on the little table in front of her. It's milk toast, I said. We eat it all the time. Strange as it seems, I want her to like it. She doesn't move and then I realize why. Oh no, I forgot your spoon, I say, and I rush back into the kitchen. I heard a thump, and when I return, the bowl is is laying face down on the floor, milk splattered everywhere. What happened, I asked. Not if Philly didn't say anything, not that I expected her to. I must have put it too close to the edge, I say, cleaning up the mess, then I set up I, I set about making another bowl of toast, milk toast. I bring it out with the spoon this time and place it in front of her on the little table. Here you go, I say. I hope you like it. She looks at the bowl for a moment and then her hands whipped out and knocked it right off the table onto the floor. I was shocked. I just stand, stand there. I didn't, didn't really believe what the boy said about her, but I do now. You did that on purpose, I say. Why? I'm your granddaughter. Her mouth t- 
twitches as if this assumed her. Something ho hopeful in my in my heart hardens. She reminds me of all the rotten boys I ever lived with. You don't scare me, I say. I clean up the mess and making another bowl of milk toast, but this time I didn't give it to the mean old lady who's my grandmother. Instead, I sat down in the chair and started eating. She stares at me, her eyes follow every spoonful. This is delicious, I say and smile. Shame you spilled yours. I swear I could see her mouth watering. When Miss B returns, Nana, Philly, and I are sitting in the parlor. Did you two have a nice, nice lunch? We had a lovely time, I say. Will you like to come tomorrow, again tomorrow? Give your poor aunt a break, Miss B asks. Sure, I say, a sweet, a smile sweetly, and smile sweetly at Nana Phil, Philly. I, I'm looking forward to getting, getting to know my grandmother. Miss B waited for me on the porch with her shopping basket when I arrived the next afternoon. There are grits and grunts and gravy on the stove and a guava duff for dessert. There are plenty for both of you, Miss B says. I got shopping to do, so I might be, so I might be a while. Take your time, I say. Thank you, turtle. She says, you're a dear. Anna Philly is in her room looking at the magazine as usual. I noticed it's upside down. Must be really interesting reading you got there, I say. The old woman ignores me, so I go into the kitchen. I spoon out two bowls of grits and grunts and gravy. Folks here eat it eat this all the time. Grits are little fish and grunts are is, are like porridge. That's the one the one good thing about Key West. There's food everywhere hanging from trees and the ocean and it's all free after what happened yesterday at lunch i figured nana philly would have wisened up but i guess you can't teach it only a, a mean old lady new tricks because the bull hasn't been in front of her for more than what for than a moment when she when her hands knocks it off the table it falls to the floor it falls to the floor and splatters in a splatter you know there are sure are a lot of hungry folks who would have liked to, to eat that, I say. But all she does is stare at the upside down magazine a little harder. I clean up the mess and ate my own lunch while with her watching the whole time. It's uncomfortable, but it's just like dealing with rotten kid, with a rotten kid. If you go back in front of them, they will never leave you, never leave you be. When I finish, I carry the bowl of guava duff out and place it in front of her. She lifts her hand to smack it, but I snatch it right just in time. You're not wasting dessert, I said. I'll eat it. I sat down and took a bite. It's delicious. It tastes like plum pudding. Miss B sure is a good cook. Nana pretends to ignore me, but I could tell she's watching. She reminds me of a, lo of a lobster with beady eyes peeking out at me from under the red her red hat mama's a good cook too she makes the best caramel curd 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 sorry guys um one of our old employers mr hard Hearn, couldn't get enough of it he had her make it four nights a week i said in nana closely you know mama told me you're you were dead she glanced quickly she glanced down quickly and and it came to me you were mean to her too weren't you i asked that's why she hasn't came back to key west my grandmother doesn't look up i know the answer to my own question poor mama i whispered chasing off chased off by her own mother no wonder she's such a wreck a shadow crossed nana's phil's face and for a brief moment, I see something like regret in her blue eyes, but then it's gone. It happened just like in the Bible. On the third day, there's a miracle. I could tell the old girl really is looking forward to see you today, Miss B says. I doubt that, but really? But say, really? Even had me get out her best hat, Miss B says. I'm not impressed. 
I don't even know what to what to come. I don't know. I didn't even want to come here today after I, what I learned yesterday. But Aunt Mimi got used to used to me helping out, so I didn't have any choice. Now, this is what I get for being a good girl. I. When I walked into the bedroom, Nana Philly puts her puts down her magazine and looks at me. She's wearing a royal blue hat with peacock feathers. You're expecting a queen? You're expecting the queen? I asked. Miss B made may has made conch chowder, and it's simmering on the stove. I fill two bowls and carry them out, placing one in front of Nana Philly. I sat down with my bowl and started eating waiting to hear the her bowl hit the floor. When I but when I looked up, she's holding the spoon. She brings it close to her she brings it to her mouth with a good with her good hand and swallows its chowder. She takes another spoonful and another. Soon her bowl is empty. You know, I say I'm missing a manini the first day when I it came here to give you lunch. But it was a Shirley Temple picture. Her eyes flew to my face, which is fine by me because I hate Shirley Temple. I say, a corner of my grandmother's mouth turned into a crooked smile and her eyes shined. Me too, she says. All right, guys. So now go into the assignment and do the answer the question.